Hello everyone and welcome to John's Drams, the channel where I, John, talk about a dram. Um, and I have a fair few things to pick up on, it being a minute since I've really talked about a whiskey per se. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time. Um, I'm recovering from a few things. I'm not actually going to be drinking the whiskey, but I'm going to be talking about one that I have drank that I've made a few notes on and uh, my own sort of personal experiences as well as a publican. Uh, how it's gone down with Joe Public, um, not just myself. Because I think perspective is an important thing with these sorts of things, talking about whiskies, how how other people interact with it. Because um, I'm in an interesting position, now, I'm not saying other people aren't in this position, absolutely they are, where you, know, you share whiskey with your friends and stuff, but I'm not in that position so much as I am almost... <laughs> Guiding people sounds very big-headed. It's not wrong, but um, advising people, I suppose, um, for want of a better way of putting it, um, on their own whiskey journey. Um, I suppose we should go in a little bit more about sort of how my my role in the whiskey journey is um, when it comes to being in a pub in Edinburgh. Um, Tourism's a big, big thing in Edinburgh. Uh, you get folk from all over the world coming to the Scotch capital. A lot of Americans wanting to connect with their Scottish roots, and they're very keen to tell you about them, believe you me. The genealogy roller coasters I have heard of uh, have been quite something. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Glencadden PX Sherry Cask Finish Whiskey, to give it its proper Christian name. Uh, it comes in a lovely purple labelled bottle, uh, and the TLDR version is it's bloody lovely. Um, Glencadden are doing a bit more of this, and um, by extension Angus Dundee I suppose, because uh, Tomtel are doing similar things as well, where they're releasing a lot of no-age statement jazzy wine finishes that are very approachable, very easy drinking, not necessarily the kind of thing that the whiskey geek audience um, is potentially keen in, but with a big caveat, um, I think a lot more should be. <laughs> um, the Glen Cannon we're going to be talking about today is mostly a box ticket. The only thing that's against it is that it doesn't have an age statement. I have nailed my colours to the mast when it comes to age statements. Um, it's an opinion that has evolved over time, but I think it's fine. I don't have a particular hang-up over age statements. Um, and I've, I've stated my reasoning for m many times, but because obviously there's been a bit of a gap, I will restate them again, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of new whiskies out there, which are three years in a day, or four years, or, you know, variations on that theme um, that are young whiskies because it's the first output for a new distillery um, and they're showing a lot of the old fuds how it's actually done <laughs> um, they're doing some very interesting things with some very good casks doing some fantastic blending um, just really showcasing some unusual or very appealing characteristics within their whiskey and basically giving the correct first impression. There have been a couple of mm ones, but they've been the exception, not the rule, which is fantastic to see. So, Glen Cadden. Uh, I'm a big fan of sherry. I do love me, do love me a sherry. Uh, the PX, uh, it's a 46 percenter. Natural colour, non-chill filtered. Um, and I got it in as soon as I could, basically. I wanted it on the shelf just to kind of gauge it, give it a go. Uh, and naturally, well, you've got to know, haven't you? So I bought myself a dram. Um, any publicans out there, or anyone who works in the uh, the trade, incidentally, um, where it is not clearly stated whether or not you are allowed a drink, um... I would always encourage, particularly in management positions, um, that you pay for your drinks. Uh, twofold. One, it's the right thing to do, because at the end of the day, this is a transactional industry that we work in. 
and two, so it's a very good precedent for your staff. Um, if they see that you're paying for your stuff, they will also pay for their stuff. It's part. It's a monkey see, monkey do. Monkey is not the right word in this context, but you understand my meaning. Um, and it's just good practice overall, really. Um, I have done this industry for God knows how. I have seen some outrageous, outrageous mental gymnastics to try and defend um, what in, oftentimes I have caught as just being outright theft. Um, yeah, and it, 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 it comes from the top down sort of a thing. So that's, that's my takeaway on that one. Anyway, and Blank Adam PX, um, like I said, I've, I've written a few notes down about uh, the flavours that I was getting out for it. So I'll just, um, for the sake of brevity, uh, chocolate, grapes, pears, prunes, tinned black currants, aloe vera hand soap, a roasting tin. This is last week's shopping list. Um, okay, I'll have to go from memory. Uh, Glen Cadden, um, the standard 10 year old, bourbon lead, so very vanilla grassy, quite sort of fruity apple and pear lead. Um, this was not that. I would stop short of saying that it was sweet, um, but there was still sort of a chocolate nuance to it. <sighs> um, I do recall it being very fruity, so very orange, apple, pear, lead. Um, the sherry influence is quite dramatic on this one. I mean, obviously, it's, it's imbued a fantastic colour, and if you've seen the bottle yourself, then you will you will see the sort of rich, dark colour that it's given this whiskey. Um, I was speaking to uh, the guys at the Glen Cadden table at the Glasgow Scotch Whiskey Festival. I was about to say awards, then. It's not right. Um, I did attend. Um, I was expecting to be speaking more about it uh, or indeed having some content. Uh, fortunately, I was not feeling very well on that day at all. Um, so there's a couple of people that bumped into me, uh, and I don't know <laughs> whether I got away with it, but I'm pretty sure they noticed there wasn't something. There was something not quite right with me that day. Um, yes, uh, Jeff in particular. Uh, I bumped into you a couple of times, and I um, yes. Sorry, that was all a bit weird. Might not even know it's my but it's just weird anyway. But yes, um, I was most certainly not on best form that day. So uh, once the whole thing was over, I I just went straight home. Um, I I didn't hang around. I I, I missed everything else, basically, because uh, I just wasn't I wasn't feeling good at all. Um, uh, a little bit physical, quite a bit up here, unfortunately. Um, but that's. That's conversations. That's not this. So, um, PX. Um, from my own personal experience with it, it was a thoroughly enjoyable whiskey. Um, I think sometimes when people watch these videos, if indeed they do watch them, I mean they're not. <laughs> they're not the most popular things. No, it's, this isn't Troy Savan twerking with no fucking knickers on. It's. A guy talking about whiskey, second hand in this case, in a dimly lit room, in black and white. Assuming the camera's still on. It's probably not. I should check that, actually. Let's have a look. This is the longest this has lasted in a while. Oh my god, it's still going. It hasn't done this in ages. I think I've stabilised it. Anyone who's been following the last six months will know me and this camera are having a time. Um, <laughs> I might have figured out why, actually. Um... We'll get back to the whiskey and I'll, I'll talk a bit more about this. It's worth sticking around for because it's weird. No, seriously, it's weird. Um, but anyway, very rich, decadent, sweet. Um, love sort of caramel notes, chocolatey. It's a very inviting, easy drinking, yet there's, there's plenty going on with it that you can talk about it. It's a discussion whiskey. Uh, TLDR version, people kind of clicking on this and be like, is it nice? Yeah, it's nice. It's actually really nice. Um, I've been kind of lauding it as 
sort of almost the the new standard for them. Um, it's they've really done a fantastic job with this one. There are other ones that they've released as well. There's a Pinot Noir wine finish. There's a, a Merlot wine cask. I think I saw recently that there's a port one as well. Um, Cody's been very busy going all over Europe, which can't be cheap anymore. Um, talking about the Glen Cannon range, people have been very impressed by it, which is understandable enough. Um, and I have tried a few samples of like the other things, and I did try the Pinot Noir wine cask finish reserver uh, at um, in, in Glasgow in the that football stadium we were in. Um, that's very pleasant, but for me the PX takes it. But again, sherry themed, so different varietals are going to appeal to different people. Of course, that's so logical. Does it replace the ten year old? It depends on what you're looking for. To be honest, the 10-year-old, bright, lovely, grassy, rich. You've got that age statement, which, you know, gets a semi in some people. Um, for those of you who want something a bit richer, fruitier, uh, luxurious, I would almost describe it as. There's something quite luxurious about it. Um, but it's also kind of light and sprightly enough that you're not bogged down by it. Because sometimes, sometimes whiskeys can be too rich, or they can be a bit too decadent. Um, Signet is an obvious example. Uh, cheaper than that, the uh, Signature Edred Hours. They can be quite heavy sometimes in a different way. They're not so much sweet because of the, the nature of the whiskey itself, but similar kind of a thing. Really heavy sherry. Um, I think my whiskey still stands the test of time as a gorgeous one, but something a bit lighter. Uh, I recently um, got the opportunity to try a young Pedro Jimenez, which I haven't done before, the um, Jimenez Spinola range. They do a young and they do a, a, a classic aged version, uh, and that was at Drinksmongers recently in, in uh, Edinburgh, where I live. Uh, um, and they were doing a, a port and dessert wine night, basically. Uh, that was a good £25. I've actually been to two tastings in one week. I'm getting used to them now. I've never used a spittoon so much in my entire life. Um... But yes, went along to that, and there was uh, two of the Jimenez Spinolas side by side PXs. Is this interesting? Probably not, but hey ho, it's my thing. Um, and one of them was a young PX, uh, very quite light in colour, which is golden in colour, and the other one was your classic syrupy rich one. It is fascinating to try a young Pedro Jimenez because it's still sweet and rich, but it has this kind of sprightliness to it. Why is this relevant? because it's kind of similar to how this Glen Cadden is. It's got that kind of... Yeah, it's sweet, but it can st it can still skip and run and jog, if that makes sense. It's got some energy to it. Uh, it's not just kind of like, pour it on your ice cream, love, that's all it's good for kind of thing. Which is not all that PX is good for, but we'll leave that there. Um, it's also cheap. Most, well, nothing's cheap anymore, but it's, it's what we'd call an affordable malt. The Glen Cadden, not the cherry. I think the Jimenez Spinol is like a million pounds or something, so not that. Um, might as well get a bottle anyway, it was very nice. There's a lovely Takai there as well. Takai, not a guy. There was a couple of handsome chaps there as well, so you know. I was having a whale of a time. Um, I'd only popped in for some ports, to be fair. We needed some for the, for the, um, you know, the building that I work in, the pub, that's it. Um... Yeah, I ended up drinking a lot of cherries and ports and lovely things. The Glen Academy retails about 45 I want to say. I've actually got the XVAT price in front of me here on my laptop. That's why I keep glancing off to the side. Um, uh, nice, affordable. If you're looking for a nice Christmas gift uh, or a good Christmas whiskey, indeed, this is a, this is a good one. Um, so there we go, that's the, the Glen Cadden PX, if that's what you're sticking around for. Um, how many Momos would I give it out of five? It's a solid four and a half, I would say. It's 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 an all-rounder. Um, it's lovely and rich, tastes nice, people will talk about it. It's got your integrity ticks. Um, purple. I don't know what more you need, really. Right, I promised to tell you about the weird things that happened to this camera. 
Uh, so this camera's not been doing too well recently, although it seems to be holding its own so far. <laughs> um, so a spider has died in it. I told you it was going to be weird, and I'm not lying. <laughs> uh, basically, a spider has crawled inside this camera, set up home, tried to catch things, because it's being a spider, found nothing, and died in it. How do I know this? Because I went to look through the viewfinder of this thing, uh, and in the viewfinder is a dead spider, covering cobwebs. Genuinely not making this up. 100, it is like something out of the Fuller House of Usher. It is nightmare fuel. The first time I saw it, I yelped. Um, I have no idea how to get it out. Because <laughs> it's just, it's inside the camera. Um, um, well, well, that's the other thing, actually. Is it a dead spider, or is it just the exoskeleton? And is there a spider literally crawling around in the... That's a horrifying feeling. That's... Ooh. I mean, I don't mind spiders, but the idea of having a living one inside this thing that I am talking to right now... That's not a very nice thought. I'm just going to put it out there. I know the arachnophobia. I'm sure you weren't expecting this at the end of the video. But, um... Anyway, let me know down below. Uh, were you at the Glasgow whiskey hoo-ha nonsense thingy? You know... There's a couple of people struggling towards the... I mean, I was struggling for different reasons, but... Yeah, I, I thought the afternoon session was just, you know, everyone's... Hey-ho, let's be... Ralphie was there. Didn't... Do you know what? This... Let's talk about this for a minute. Um, get away from the spider. Well, as far as... Where is, I mean, I'm closer to the spider than you guys are, so, you know, that's something to be thankful for this... This Thanksgiving. Um... A lot of people I recognise uh, at the Glasgow Whiskey Festival, and I, what in my head I was like, oh, I'm going to go along. I'm actually going to say hello to loads of people. And then on the day when I get there, because of the frame of mind I was in, um, I I haven't done this in a while because I'm I'm normally quite good at getting over it now. Um, but I just I sort of shot off, um, and I I mean I, I saw Roy there. I saw. Um, then uh, Ralphie was kicking around. Um, I, I knew which tape he was at the uh, Art Merkin store. I could have gone and said hello, um, but I I sometimes get in a headspace when I'm not doing great, uh, where I feel like I don't want to interact with people. So already being at the Glasgow Whiskey <laughs> Festival <laughs> was a very overwhelming time, because it's busy. It is busy. Um, so that was the first thing. And the second thing was, like, I, I didn't... I didn't want to put myself on these people, if that makes sense. Um, saying it now out loud, I'm like, what am I talking about? I should have gone and said hello, but that was not the, the frame of mind I was in at the time. Um... I'm not going to keep going on about it because I've said it a fair few times in the last, like, six or seven videos, but, you know, I've had a bit of a rough year. <laughs> uh, and it's it's taken a bit of a toll on me just, you know, keeping everything together. Um, everything should hopefully be wrapping up at this point. Uh, there was just a few more kind of bumps in the road I had to get over, and they all kind of happened in this last weekend just gone. Um, so, yeah, so that was... I... Uh, not only made a conscious choice not to say hello to people, I, in hindsight, sort of actively avoided interacting with people that I recognised. Um, I did have a couple of people come and say hello, and I really appreciate that. And if you happen to be watching this, thank you very much for actually coming and saying hello, because it did help a little bit uh, to kind of... Because I was kind of wandering around. I almost felt like I'd broken in. It's weird. I, I, I can't really explain it. Um... But yeah, um, so there's probably a few folk that I mean, may have, might have, I mean, I was in a bright yellow coat, you can't, you can't have missed me in hindsight, but, um, yeah, I was, in, I was in a weird place that day, um, I actually nearly didn't go, because <laughs> I, uh, when it came to the day, I was like, I don't know if I'm up to this, <laughs> but, um, I, I decided I wouldn't, I decided it would be worse if I didn't go, uh, and I'm glad I did. 
I'm, I'm glad I went along. But um, just as a counterbalance, um, normally I, I like to present a counterbalance on whiskey things because, you know, I like to be edgy and cool, but in, in this particular instance, uh, I didn't enjoy myself as much as everybody else did, but that is for reasons that are entirely exterior to the, the festival. It's, it's not the festival's fault, it's not the people's fault, it's just due to horrendous timing um, in my own personal life, I didn't feel, I didn't enjoy it anywhere near as much as I should have done. Um, I was even at the Bladnik table and I just kind of spaced out, for want of a better way of putting it. Um, I, I really was not present, unfortunately. But hey, yeah, that's, 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 I'll maybe give it another bash next year. <laughs> Um, in hindsight, a chaperone might have been useful, but, uh, tickets there, well, I say that, there was a fair few spares going by the end, but, hey-ho. Anyway, let me know down your, your comments down below, um, have you tried any of the Glen Caddam, uh, cask finishes, let's call them, I suppose, the PX, the Pinot Noir, the Port, any of those ones, uh, do you like the ten-year-old? What do you think of Glen Caddam in general? Um, were you at the Glasgow Whiskey Festival? Let me know down below. How did you find it? Did you enjoy yourself? Did you have any favourites? There we go. That's that wraps that up. I think I'm about done. This will this will do. I reckon. Let's see if any of this is actually usable. Because if it is, then this is the first video this camera has managed in a minute. Now that the spider inside it is dead. That's just fucking weird for my life. Anyway, uh, thumb the video if you enjoyed it and all the rest of it. Um, there was a support thingy. Um, do you feel like chipping in and helping out maybe put towards a new camera or something? I don't know. Um, or an exorcist to get the ghost of the spider out of this one. Not alive. Uh, failing that, uh, thumb the video if you haven't subscribed already and you think this might be a cup of tea for whatever reason, then do that. Do that. Um, thank you very much for watching, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. Do I still say that?